When powering a circuit, you need a stable power supply. With the popularity of USB, 5 volts has become pretty standard. But what if you need 12 volts or 3.3 volts? Well, then you can use a voltage regulator. These devices take a voltage in on one side and output a different voltage on the other side. In this episode of Add Ohms, we're going to talk about linear voltage regulators. There are two major types of voltage regulators, linear and switching. Linear regulators only need a small amount of components, are simple to add to the board, but are not very efficient. Switching regulators can be made to be very efficient for a particular circuit, but can be difficult to design. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on linear regulators. We will cover switching regulators in another Atom tutorial. Here is an LM7805. This regulator may be the most important integrated circuit in the history of electronics. It's available in many different styles. This is the TO220, which is the most popular. Why? Because they are super easy to put into a breadboard and can dissipate lots of heat. More on that later. Let's talk about how linear voltage regulators work. Looking at a schematic for the LM7805, you can see it is pretty simple. A voltage goes on one side and a smaller voltage comes out the other. These are called the coupling capacitors. This thing is the source which provides the input voltage. It could be a battery, another regulator, or even USB. The output is connected to a load. The load is your device, like an LED, microprocessor, or sensor. For a linear voltage regulator to work, the input voltage must always be more than the output. Usually, the input voltage needs to be at least 2 volts greater than the output. If the input voltage is too low, the regulator will be unstable. The lowest input voltage the regulator works at is known as the dropout voltage. This value can be found in the regulator's datasheet. Here is the value for the LM7805. An LDO can operate with less than 2 volts of headroom. So then what is an LDO? An LDO is a linear regulator that has a low dropout voltage. For example, let's look at the datasheet for the NCP1117. It has a dropout range from 0.9 volts to 1.2 volts. To get 5 volts out, only 6 volts is needed. Now let's talk about current and how much heat gets generated. The difference between the input and output voltage creates a voltage drop across the regulator. The regulator's output current is the same as its input current. Knowing these two things, we can then calculate power by multiplying the voltage drop by the current. For example, if we have 12 volts in, 5 volts out, and 1 amp of current, this regulator would drop 7 volts multiplied by the 1 amp to get 7 watts of power. 7 watts might seem like a small number, so let's figure out what the internal temperature of the silicon will be. From the LM7805's datasheet, I know the thermal resistance of the package is 65 degrees C per watt. Multiply that by 7 watts, and we get an enormous 455 degrees C. Does this mean the chip is going to burn itself up? Well, no, because linear regulators have thermal shutdown protection. When you're getting started with electronics, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to create short circuits accidentally. Actually, that's not entirely true. Whether you're just getting started or you have 10 years of experience, you're still going to short things out. After all, a short circuit is a path with little or no resistance, which means a lot of current will flow. When a lot of current flows through the regulator, it heats up. As it approaches its maximum junction temperature, the regulator begins to shut down, dropping the output voltage. This is the most common reason the output voltage might be wrong. The regulator is going into thermal shutdown. However, there is one more reason the output voltage might be wrong, and that's the decoupling capacitors. 
When the input voltage or the load changes, there will be a change in the regulator's output voltage. Without these capacitors, the regulator's output voltage might swing wildly. On an oscilloscope, you'd see ripple voltage, while a multimeter might read the wrong voltage entirely. Decoupling capacitors help minimize this change. The input capacitor decouples or separates the regulator from the supply voltage. The output capacitor provides a small buffer for the load. But you might be wondering, what values of decoupling capacitors do you use? Well, we check the regulator's datasheet. For our LM7805, small values like 330 nanofarads and 100 nanofarads are suggested by this manufacturer. And that's all you need for most applications. Almost every circuit contains at least one linear voltage regulator, so I hope you understand them better now. Of course, we couldn't cover everything related to regulators, so we'll have some future videos to cover them. Make sure you follow or subscribe to add ohms to know when those become available. If you have questions, feel free to leave comments with this video, or better yet, go to forum.addohms.com and leave questions there. You'll also find show notes, links to interesting material, as well as information on how to support the show.